Amen. Let's see your Bibles this morning. Say word. Very good. Let's see your pens. Lesson plan. Very good. Very good. Uh, turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. First book of the New Testament. First book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 6. And as we uh, wait for y'all to find Matthew, please call your dad, no matter what your relationship with him is, and tell him you love him. No matter what your relationship with your dad is, and tell him you love him. There's nothing to do with my message, just wanted to say that to you. Lord, thank you so much for your Bible. Thank you so much for... Um, Dads, and Lord, you've given a dads, fathers, your title. And with that title comes a lot of responsibility and a lot of pressure at times. And I pray that you encourage fathers today to be fathers. I pray you encourage them. We all have failures in our past, things we wish we did different. And I pray that they would pray that you would restore in their life what the locusts have eaten, that you would not allow the devil to convince them to give up being fathers. I pray you would restore relationships between fathers and children and parents and wives. But, Lord, restore fatherhood to families. And even those fathers that um, have been separated and divorced and separated from their families, I pray that somehow you would heal what has been destroyed. We know the devil is a, is a destroyer. One of his names is a destroyer. But you are the great physician, and you are a healer. So we pray that fathers would take a faith step to bring about healing in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. There was a little boy in, the, in a park and he had a little soap bottle with a little ring on the stick, and he put the ring in the, in the little soap bottle and blew bubbles out. So he's walking around blowing bubbles. Y'all, y'all know what that is, right? Does anybody not know what that is? Shame on you if you don't know what that is. Anyway, go, you, I, don't, they stay, I assume they still sell it. You can go to the store and get a little soap bottle. You can actually make your own, um, or you can just put soap in your mouth. <laughs> How many of y'all got soap in your mouth from your mother when you were a little kid, okay? Okay, if you don't know that, whenever they say a bad word, you just take a bar of ivory, ivory's the best, and just shove it right in their mouth, <laughs> wash it out. We used to get that. We have five kids in our family. We used to stand out in front of the bathroom in our line. <laughs> you know, and we could just hear, ah, 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 in the room, and just, we could go next. So you could, you could just put soap in your mouth, or you could put a little ring in a soap bottle. But this little kid was in the park, and he was blowing bubbles with the soap ring, and, and the bubbles were going up, and the wind was blowing them, and he was just watching them. And then after a few minutes, he noticed that these giant bubbles were coming back to him from up in the sky. And the bubbles he sent up were clear. You could see the rainbow as the light was refracted in the soap. But the bubbles that started coming down were, you know, orange and blue, all these colors he had never seen, and they were giant bubbles, all different sizes, but they were really big. And they were coming right at him, back to him. They were blown around, but they were coming right to him. And when they popped on him, it made him happy. It made him feel good. It, it gave him encouragement. When they popped on him, it gave him vision for his life. It started to change the way he felt towards people he didn't get along with. He all of a sudden had more love for people, more patience, more encouragement. Uh, um, he had wisdom and insight into who he was. He was able to face his own issues. And he started noticing that, you know, I, I, he liked it. So everywhere he went, he would take his little soap bottle and he would just blow bubbles at school, when he went on vacation, when he was driving down the road. And everywhere he went, he would blow these bubbles out. And these bubbles would come right to him wherever he was. Even if he was in a building, they would come right through the wall and pop on him and started changing his life. And he couldn't, he got addicted to it, if addicted it can be a good word, where he just had to do it every single day. Whenever you pray, you are sending bubbles up to God. We're going to see later calls incense as well. You're sending messages up to God, but the, the, the key point about prayer is that God is going to send the bubble back to you. 
And in those bubbles, there's a lot more than information. You're going to see its power and insight and character in the heart of God. And when you pray, you must have the patience to understand, the insight to understand that a bubble is going to come back to you. They're going to go up and they're going to come down. And what's in those bubbles is a lot more than you bargain for. Now, if you look in your notes, we're going to look at number one in your notes. Prayer is faith-based information. I'm sorry, faith-based communication with God. Faith-based communication with God. Everyone say communication. Now, if you look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, let's read Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 13. It says, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues or on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Everyone say, when you pray. pray. It's not about if you pray. You will pray. By the way, even heathens pray. Even, you know that 21% of atheists believe there's a God? I mean, you may not know that, but I'm telling you, 21% of people who don't believe in God believe there's a God. 100% of people will pray at some point in their life. If you ever say, oh, God, that's praying. (laughs) You're you're crying out to somebody up there to do something for you that you can't do. Okay? So the Bible says when you pray, it says don't be like the hypocrites who stand in the synagogues or in the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. There's nothing wrong with standing in the synagogue and praying. There's nothing wrong with standing in the street and praying, but don't do it so people can see you and get credit from people. He said you want to do it where it's between you and God. Let's keep reading. Look what it says. It says, verse 6, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you shut the door, pray to your father who is in a secret place, and your father who sees you in the secret place will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. When you pray, don't say the same thing over and over and over and over again, thinking that if I say 20 or 30 or 40, God's going to give you more credit because you said it more times. The Bible says, don't do that. (laughs) Many of us have been through that where you say it's over and over and say five of these and 20 of these and 30 of these. God says, no, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. I want you to talk to me like a person. Remember, we were made in the image of God. We're people. He's more of a person than we are. We were made in his image. You wouldn't go up to someone and say, how are you, Father? How are you, Father? How are you, Father? How are you, Father? Father, you look good. Father, you look good. Father, you look good. Father, you look good. Father, I mean, now, now, by the way, let me do say this. When you say, Daddy, can I, have, can I have $30? Daddy, can I have $30? He may give it to you just to shut you up. <laughs> okay? But that's not relationship. You want to talk to your heavenly Father just as you would talk to a person. Don't just say over and over and over again. You're not getting any credit for saying it more times. This is what the Bible's telling you. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Okay, look what it says, verse 7. When you pray, do not use verse vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard by them any words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and do not lead us into temptation. For deliver us from evil, the evil one, for yours is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus is not saying say that over and over again. He is saying pray like this, and we're going to look at in the coming weeks what that means, the structure of the prayer, the type of topics you need to talk about. So he's not saying repeat that over and over again. He's saying here's a a format, a model, and fill in the blank. We're going to talk about forgiveness. We'll we'll look at this later later in the series. We're going to talk about praying for your enemies. We're going to talk about praying for strength, those kind of topics. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about what does it mean to pray in Jesus' name? Let me tell you what it doesn't mean. Say whatever you want and say Jesus' name at the end and it comes true. That's not what it means, so don't think that. We're going to talk about how to, what hinders your prayer. You can pray all day and God says, I'm not listening to you until you deal with that. And I'll tell you, one of those things is, fellas, how many of y'all are married? Raise your hand. Fe- guys, married? Raise your hand. Very good. You want your pay- how many of you fellas want your prayer to be powerful? Raise your hand. Very good. I'm going to tell you one thing that you can do to make your prayers more powerful. Take care of your wife. Because if you don't take care of your wife, God won't answer your prayer. The Bible says that. We'll see that in a minute. All the ladies say, hey. Hey. Dag. (laughs) 
Don't get all happy, ladies, because y'all got issues too now. <laughs> but it, 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 if, you got, if you got tension between your wife and you're not dealing with, you, you can forget about your prayers. God, God's going to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Make mama happy. You got to take care of your wife. And then we'll come talk. Huh? So, so we'll deal with that in a, in a, in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to talk about the fact that God wants to answer your prayer. He's got all kind of bubbles, not literal, but these bubbles with your name on it. And by the way, the bubbles that he has your name on, I'm not going to get them. And you don't need mine. He's got bubbles with my name on it more than I could ever get. And so no one's going to steal your bubbles. You, but there's stuff up there, that answers that God has for you that he wants to give you. Makes him happy. Why do y'all think y'all cry when you saw that thing? Because it, <laughs> it's a whole lot of reasons. I just won't get into them right there. <laughs> we want to bless our little girls. We want to take care of our little girls. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. So we're going to talk about how he wants to answer your prayer. We're going to talk about how to pray, a model for prayer, um, what hinders our prayer, etc. Um, but number one, prayer is communication. Now, communication is a sharing or uh, exchanging of ideas, information, and things. Communication is a sharing. It's two-way. If you ever have a conversation with someone and they do all the talking, how many of us know people when you, when you have a conversation with this person, you're probably not going to say too much? Okay. And so what do you do? You avoid those people. Why? Because you just sit there and go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then at the end, you go, yeah, hey, it was really fun. Hey, wasn't that great? Yeah, it was really great. Listen to you talk. <laughs> That's not communication. Communication is two way. Say two way. Yeah. But a lot of times we pray to God one way. Dear God, dear God, dear God, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that, give me that. What's taking so long? And uh, come on, God, hurry up. And I'm praying and I haven't killed anybody, so I'm really a good person. So just, <laughs> amen. And God's like this, ah, ah, ah. And then we go, amen, we're walking away. And he's like, we're not listening. It's two-way. It's two-way. Look at Revelation, last book of the Bible. Last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 8. When I first got saved, I was challenged by a pastor. He says, when you pray, you go into your closet. And I literally, that day, went into a closet. And by the way, you don't have to pray in a closet. You can pray driving down the street. You can pray walking. You can pray constantly. Pray without ceasing. Prayer is communication to God. You can communicate to God all the time. At your job, when you're at your work. When I used to play football, I was on the football field saying, God, where do you want me to go? I actually had a, a, a little argument. Well, it really didn't turn into an argument. I uh, disagreed with my coach because... I was supposed to, you know the numbers on the field? You ever, you ever notice the football field has numbers on them? <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but there's little hash marks, and then there's numbers. And if you play a certain defense, half the field, you're supposed to be, my coach wanted me outside the numbers. I wanted to be inside the numbers. Because I wanted to, you know, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to be too far wide and tell the quarterback where I was going, so I wanted to be inside. And I'm standing inside the numbers, and the guy said, just stay right there. I said, God, where's, where's it going to go? Where's the ball going to go? So I would ask God, what the play was going to be. Help me out. And he just said, stay right there. So I got yelled at because I was, I, the coach wanted me outside numbers. I was an inside numbers. I was talking to guys. I, and I couldn't get into him saying, look, uh, coach, God told me to stand <laughs> on the inside. And, and then what he said is as soon as he hikes it, just run to the outside. So you'll get there at the same time. Don't worry about it. And, and so my point is that really happened. That, that communication you can ask God and should everything and anything. doesn't mean he's going to tell you anything and everything. But my point is that it's all the time. Communication both ways, all the time. Look what it says in verse cha chapter, three, uh, chapter 8, Revelation, verse 3. It says, another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, everyone say smoke of the incense. With the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. So here's God on his throne. Don't know what it looks like, but I know it's bright like a, like, a, like a rainbow and bright lights. Angel comes flying up the speed of light. I'm just guessing it's the speed of light, but just flying up. And he has your prayers. 
Y'all remember incense on a stick? How many of y'all? Did you raise your hand? Okay, so all the pot smokers that I had it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put it around the door. <laughs> so, no, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We won't go there. So <laughs> my wife has these candles. They, they, they're scented candles. And every now and then she'll light it. And, you know, I walk in the house and I'm, what's that smell? It's supposed to, I'm supposed to go, oh, that's so good. You know, but it kind of surprises me. So I'm like, what is it? Is something burning? Yeah, it's a candle. <laughs> God sits on the throne. And he, <sighs> because when you pray, you are communicating to God, I need you. You're communicating to God, I can't do it. You're communicating to God, I know you're there. Or at least I believe you're there. You're communicating to God everything that's on your heart. He loves that. You're also acknowledging that he is God and you are not. You also become intimate with him. You become intimate with who you pray for. You become intimate with who you pray with. And you become intimate with who you pray to. That's why, ladies, if you ever pray with a guy and you guys pray, 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 be careful. Your hearts will get knitted. Is that a bad thing? It could be. Because you may, be, you may be spending too much time alone with a guy that you want to grow spiritually together with, and all of a sudden something else starts happening in one of your hearts. So just be careful. But definitely when you pray to God, you become intimate with God. Okay? And so God is sitting on the throne. He's receiving your prayers, and he is, you, he, you are communicating to him. But also, you need to wait for him to communicate to you. He wants to respond to your prayer. When in Genesis chapter, if you're, writing, if you're writing down notes, write down Genesis chapter 32. In Genesis chapter 32, Jacob is wrestling with an angel. And this, this uh, picture and story of just J- Jacob wrestling with angel. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And it was changed to Israel when he wrestled with the angel. And he wrestled with the angel all night. And again, angels can whoop him with just a swat of his finger. But the angel let him humor himself, and wrestle with him. And the angel of the Lord, by the way, is Jesus in the Old Testament. And Jacob says to the angel, I am not going to let you go until you bless me. Say with me, I will not let you go till you bless me. That is prayer. Him wrestling with the angel is prayer. And when you wrestle with God, you're saying, God, please, God, please, God, please. You say, God, I am not going to let go until you bless me. It doesn't mean that you're blackmailing God. It means that, God, I am never going to let you go until your will is done in my life. That's what that means. I need to know. And so it's communication. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to wait to hear you. This guy told me, when you go pray in your closet, don't get up from praying until you hear God's voice. I was so scared because I didn't know what it was going to sound like. I thought James Earl Jones was going to speak from the corner of the, of the room. You know, and he, and he said, you, you have to listen. So understand that it's communication. Write down, write down Psalm 27, 14. Psalm 27, 14. It says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall surrender, strengthen your heart. Wait. Everyone say wait. wait. I say on the Lord, Wait. In other words, God, I'm praying, I'm praying, and this, God, I want this, I need this, I need this, I need this, and then I'm going to wait. And I'm going to get my pen. I'm going to put it on a piece of paper, and I'm going to wait. God, answer me. Tell me. Tell me. Wait. Number two in your notes, I think. Through prayer, God gives information and insight. Through prayer, God will give you information and insight. He will give you information and insight. Jeremiah, just about in the middle of the Bible, Jeremiah 33.3, if you could turn there. And this is a great verse to remember. It's short and to the point and clear, crystal clear. Jeremiah 33.3. And while you turn there, I'll tell you this story. There was a man who was uh, in the hospital, and his daughter asked the pastor to come see him. When the pastor came to see him, he was sitting there talking to an empty chair. The pastor thought he had, you know, maybe he was going a little crazy being in the hospital. And he asked the guy, uh, what are you doing? (laughs) 
He says, well, my prayer life, I've had trouble praying, so I just imagine that Jesus is sitting in the chair, and I talk to him. Came back a few days later, and he had died, and his head was laying in the chair. Prayer is saying, God, I, I am laying my life into your lap. I'm surrendering myself to you. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me, and I will tell you great and mighty things that you don't know. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. How many of you would love, really need to know, really need to know right now, today, this time in your life, something really great and mighty that you don't know? You, there's something you need to know in your life that you would love God to tell you. Amen? You know what God says? Ask me. Ask me. And I'll, I'll lead you to the truth. It doesn't mean, dear God, what is my stock going to do? <laughs> I mean, he may say, sell. He may say, hold. And he may say, you should have never bought in the first place. <laughs> I'm not talking about that necessarily. Because God gives us information in very, very mysterious ways. But one of the things he does is that he says, call to me and I will tell you stuff. I will give you insight and information. That is what he does. So one of these bubbles has information in it. He wants to tell you stuff about yourself, tell you stuff about people, about circumstances, about job interview, about schools to go to, about what you should study in school, what you should be when you grow up. He wants to give you information. So when you give God your information and you give God your question, you need to wait for the information. That's why if you have a pen and you can write it down, you won't forget it. And by the way, if someone ever comes up to you and says they have an idea, you should sit, and this is what we do all the time when people want to start ministries here. We have, I don't know, 60-something ministries. We always say you have to go write it down. And as a matter of fact, they have a lot to write. What's your vision statement, your mission, how you're going to do it. And if they don't write it down, we don't let them start it. Because if you don't write it down, well, no one else can do it with you. And number two, uh, uh, you really don't know it. A lot of us have ideas and feelings, but if you can't write it down with someone can understand, it's not going to get done. And number two, you really don't know it. You just have a feeling. You've got to convert that into something that can be understood. If you're praying on your knees and God starts to shower you with these bubbles and you're feeling this, especially if you're asking specifics, you want to be able to write it down. So my challenge to you is to just write every day what you feel God telling you, and you will see a pattern. Stop eating bonbons at 11 o'clock at night. Stop eating bonbons at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> Go to church every Sunday. Every Sunday, God? Yeah. You ever think about that? Read your Bible every day. Serve in a ministry and stop clapping for the people who are serving in your place. <laughs> and if you think, was he talking about me? Yeah, probably if it's you. <laughs> Whatever he starts telling you over and over again, guess what? That's how he's communicating to you. But you have, to, you have to call to him, and then you have to let him speak back to you. Number three in your notes, the next one, it says, through prayer, God shapes our heart and character. You're in Jeremiah. A few books before this psalm, turn to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. God wants to change the way you think, the way you, what you desire, how you react. Someone cuts you off on the freeway, and what do you do? You yell, you flip them off, you start cursing in your car, and, 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 and you do all this thing and no one sees you, no one can hear you, but you're on your way to church. Matter of fact, you're in the church parking lot. You park in the wrong place and someone tells you, please don't park your car there, and you walk away anyway and come into church. And or, this happens all the time, by the way, you bump one of the parking lot attendants with your car. This happens. F-bomb out the window. This happens. Right here. And the people who are in the community say, those rock people are like that. And, and, and worse than that, those Christians are Jesus people. And you come to church, hey, praise the Lord. Hey, Pastor Miles, hey, how you doing? Just praying for you today. Yeah, right, right, right. You just flip the person off outside. You can't do that. 
God, change my heart. Here is my junk. Change my heart. I don't want to do that. Even though I might think I deserve to do it, which you don't, but you may believe that. Prayer, there's a bubble, there are bubbles up there that come down and not only give you information, they change your desire. Let me say that again. There are bubbles up there not only with information, facts, but with new desires. How many of you would love to have new, stronger, godly desires? How many of you love to, God to erase your mind of images and thoughts that you've had for years? Anybody? Yes. Oh, yeah. Look, 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 look what it says. <laughs> look, look, look. I'm a rapper. Look, 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 look what it says in <laughs> verse 10, chapter 51. <laughs> it says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. How many of y'all got a dirty heart? Everybody raise your hand, please. <laughs> are those Christians, they're sinners. Yes, they are. Uh, they just, they're, they're not perfect. No, they're not. God, change my heart. You have to see prayer as an opportunity for that bubble to come down and change your heart. God wants to transform your heart. Turn to Romans, uh, the sixth, number six, one, two, three, five, sixth book in the New Testament, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1. What book are we in? What chapter? What verse? Very good. Let's read it. It says, I beseech you therefore, my brothers, according to the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. It says, Paul says, in light of the first 11 chapters that says you're a sinner and doomed to go to hell, in light of all that, that you can't save yourself, I, I, I encourage you, based on all that information, to present your body a living sacrifice. You hear that? That's steel right there. <laughs> No, I'm like, that hurts, it hurts. <laughs> this is a body. Present your body, your brain, your hands, your voice, your reason, all your stomach and your legs and everything. Give that to God. In Old Testament, they would take an animal and put it in the fire, and the fire would consume the animal, and, and the fire was like the Holy Ghost consuming it on behalf of God. Now, in the New Testament, we say, God, here's my physical body, not in the fire, but the Holy Spirit fire. I'm surrendering myself to you. Okay? That's what it says. Surrender your body, a living sacrifice. Everyone say living. Yes. Living means it's functional. Lord, I am going to speak for you. I'm going to talk for you, pray for you, encourage for you. I'm going to plan for you. I'm going to strategize. I'm going to dream for you, your benefit. I'm going to function. You, you gave me this body to function, and I'm going to do it all for you. So I'm surrendering to you. Okay? But, but look what it says. It says when you do that, you do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. This is a prayer verse as well. What you're saying to God is, God, I am surrendering myself to you. Change my mind. Change the way I think. Instead of saying, dear God, please give me a red Corvette, a big house on the beach, and, 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 a, and a woman. I need to have a woman. Well, let me tell you something. If you, if, you, if you say, God, I surrender my body to you, which is a prayer, I surrender my life to you, God will renew your mind, you will become a godly man, and you will have more women than you can handle, but because you are godly, you will have enough character to only choose one of them. <laughs> God will change the way you think. God will change what you desire. The Bible says in Psalm 37, 4, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. What does that mean? God, I delight myself in you. I love you. I care for you. And he will send down a bubble with desires and put it in your heart. Not, God, I love you. Now give me what I want. That's not what it means. It's, God, I love you. I delight myself in you. And all of a sudden, he sends into your heart a new desire. I want to read the Bible for, oh, for some reason. All of a sudden, I want to get up a little early and read my Bible. 
I want to get real early and pray. I need to really be more thankful. I really need to be more patient. All of a sudden, you have these new desires. How many of you have ever had desires that are godly that came from nowhere as far as you were concerned? You didn't raise your hand real high. Okay, very good. Very good. All of a sudden, and, and, and you know what happened? Some of y'all ignored it, and it went away. And then it came back again. And you went, oh, there it is again. And you ignored it, and it went away. You know what happened? God sent the bubble down. You went, wow, what was that? And maybe you did it for a little while, then you ignored it. Stop praying. God said, hmm, okay. And everybody's different, but some of y'all he let stray and ruin your life. And then he, you prayed again, and he sent the bubble again. At some point, my encouragement is to take the bubble. Let it change you. Let it transform your mind. Because if you, if you, if you let God transform your mind... His will for your life will be plain to you. See, it's one thing. In our culture, we always want to know, what are the do's and don'ts of being a Christian? If I don't smoke cigarettes, if I don't curse, if I don't this, I'm a Christian. That's not how it works. There are people who are doing things that you may say are very wrong who are Christian and who will go to hell because they're in process. In other words, they get saved, and there's a whole bunch of change that needs to take place in their life, and it ain't going to take place day one. They're in process, and God is working on them, and our role is to help God, is help them in that process, to encourage them, not to judge them, saying, if you're, not, if you're doing this, you must be a non Christian. It's not that simple. It's just not that simple. Is that, is, that, is that God is working and transforming them, and as their heart is changed, and as they realize that change, and as their mind is renewed, they start to discover that is, cursing is wrong. Wow. I never felt so convicted that cursing is wrong. Some of you have a beer at a football game. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. For some of you, it's the worst thing you could ever do. It's between you and God. And people can argue, well, you know, you're being a bad witness. That is true. And other people can say, you know what? You're having one beer at a game? He used to have a 12-pack. He's doing really good. And everybody who he's with, they do 12-packs. And they're looking at him going, he's only having one, and they're starting to question whether they should have a 12-pack. That guy's doing really good for, that, for now. For now. But you know, that's between him and God. And if he's true to God, God will deal with him. And so it's a process. And when God starts to renew your mind and you start to see life God's way, your behavior will change because it won't be acceptable to you anymore. That all happens. One of the things that happens in prayer is that when you're praying, God starts to change your mind. As you walk with God, he starts to change the way you think in, in addition to giving you more information. I, 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 I. <laughs> this is my opinion but kind of not, that when we pray for stuff, that God is up there saying this. If they would let me change their mind and think like me, they wouldn't ask me that question. Is that we keep asking God the same questions because we haven't let him change our mind and change the way we reason and think. Number four, or the last one. Through prayer, God expresses his power. There are bubbles with power in it. Shaboom, shabang, bada boom, bada bing power. <laughs> Is that when Elisha prayed and fire came out of heaven and killed all the prophets of Baal? And when Moses prayed and the Red Sea parted, when Elisha prayed and a little boy was raised from the dead, we can go on and on and on and on and on. When Daniel prayed and the lions didn't eat him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prayed and Jesus came in the fire with him and saved him. There's power. If you just pray this prayer and walk away, and, 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 and by the way, not expect the power, not put yourself in a position by faith that you need the power, because God's going to guide and direct you to do things and be places where you need God. He is going to challenge you to walk by faith where you need a miracle. And, if you're, and, and so when you pray, he's going to say, I'm going to change what you think. I'm going to change how you reason. I'm going to give you power, and I'm going to lead you to, to take steps of faith, and I'm not going to show you the power until you need it because I want you to trust me. I want you to trust me. Some of y'all are in a position right now where God has to do something incredible in your life, and only God can do it through his power, and he's, t he's challenging you to trust him. So what you need to do is start praying more. And start calling him, and God, I, I need power. I'm surrendering to you my weakness. The Bible says when you're weak, you're strong. Why? Because when you're weak and you realize how weak you are, the more you depend on God, and God has unlimited power. 
There's no limit to God. James chapter 5, you're in, uh, turn 10 books to the back. I'm just guessing. Right after Hebrews is James, and we're going to, we got to end with this because our time is running out. James chapter 5, verse 16. James 5, 16. It says, the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And look what it says in verse 6, 16. James 5, 16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I want my prayers to availeth much. What does that mean? Do a lot of work. And look what it says next. Elisha, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Can you imagine that? Now that's a, <laughs> Let me read it again. <laughs> Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Why does it say with a nature like ours? Because God wants you to know he was just like you. What problem you got? God says prayer, prayer can handle it. He prayed and, went, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Then he prayed and it rained. God has given you a big problem. And the reason he's not letting it fix it, because he wants to do it his way. Some of your problem is your own sin. You're going to die and go to hell. Right now, if you die today, you go to hell. God can fix that today. Some of you have relationship problems, health problems, fear problems, addiction problems. God can deal with all that. Some of you will die of what you fear, but you won't die hopeless. I was with a woman the other day. Uh, in the hospital, at death's door. She's been in a lot of pain. She's ready to go, younger than me. But she's ready. She's ready. And, and, she, and she, wanted, she says, I, I want to die. I said, look, I can't pray that you die. That would be against, I, I can't pray that God kill you. So here's what we're going to pray, that he end your pain with, by bringing you to heaven. <laughs> that, but, she's, but she's got hope. So I'm not saying if you pray, God's going to do what you want. But when you pray, you facilitate God doing what he wants. So right now we're going to pray. Some of y'all need God to forgive you of your sin. You need salvation. Some of y'all need encouragement. Some of you need hope. Some of you need, some of you are depressed. God wants to deal with your depression. And he may deal with your depression by giving you a doctor who can help you. <laughs> but the point is that he wants to help you. So let's all bow our heads and pray. Lord, thank you so much for creating prayer. You tell us to pray. You teach us how to pray. You encourage us to pray. But thank you that you created in the first place. Without it, we would have no way to communicate to you. And Lord, there are people here today. They want to surrender to you all their junk images in their mind, memories, pain, sin. They want to send them up to you in bubbles, incense. But more importantly, they want to receive from you forgiveness and salvation and joy. So if you would like to pray to God with me today, if you would like to receive salvation or encouragement, pray this prayer with me. In the privacy of your heart, pray, dear God, I know you love me. I know that you died for me and rose. I know you have a plan for me. I surrender my sinful nature to you. My guilt and my shame. And I want to receive your forgiveness and your love. A new heart and a new mind. I want to receive salvation and hope. Please forgive me. Please love me. Thank you, God. If you're 
If you prayed that prayer, and you want God's forgiveness today, you want to be prayed for, you want salvation, in a minute I'm going to ask you to stand up. By standing up, you are acknowledging, yes, I am surrendering to God my life. And I want from him everything he has for me. So eyes closed, heads bowed. If you prayed that prayer, you're saying, yes, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Encourage me today. Give me salvation. Just stand to your feet and acknowledge his work in your life. God bless you. Stay standing. God bless you. 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 God bless all of you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. We see you all over. We see you in the balcony. see you all over the room. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now we're going to ask all y'all who are standing to do one more thing. In a minute, we're going to ask you to come down to the altar. If you're in the balcony, all you have to do is turn around and walk up, and the ushers will bring you down. So right now, all y'all who are standing, just come out of your seat, grab your family if you want, and come on down to the altar, and let's give them a hand as they come on down. Say, Jesus! God bless you. Stay right there. Just face me. There we go. God bless you. 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 <laughs> Stay right there. When, you, when does your baby do? When does your baby do? Wow. God bless you. 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 <laughs> Say Jesus! God bless you, 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 amen, God bless you, 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 Say Jesus! Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Say Jesus! God bless you. Come forward. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Jer Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call to me and I will tell you great and mighty things that you don't know. If you knock, I will open the door. If you seek me, you will find me. It doesn't happen as automatic as we want. Sometimes God plays hard to get because he wants to see how hard you want it. He's not a quick fix. He's not a, a rabbit's foot. He's God and we're not. And he wants us to seek him. He wants us to want him. He wants us to be serious about it. But he will never let us down. He created us for the whole purpose of having a relationship with him. That's what he created us for. So it's not like it's a game. It's very serious. We, we just don't take it serious enough. And so if you cry to him every day, people who pray more and, and as long as they do it sincerely, their lives are different than people who don't. You can't have more than enough God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you can't. Amen. You can't, you, you can't ever have more than enough God. So my, my encouragement to you is that today is a day of a change in the way you operate, that you're going to pray more to God. Uh, there's a tape in the bookstore. We're going to end up getting to this sermon called Our Sipper. But if you want to learn how to pray according to the Lord's Prayer, you can go to the bookstore and get a tape called Our Sipper, A-W-C-I-P-A. It's a little acronym that we made up to guide your prayer. Uh, and it's good to know 
so you have structure. You're praying your heart, but you're staying in one topic at a time so you can stay focused. But the point is this relationship. So um, God is going to do something incredible to your life, and we want to incur- help you in that process. We're going to pray for you in a minute, and then we're going to send you all up this aisle, and we're going to ask all y'all sitting over here, if y'all can wait, we get all these people through. Uh, we're going to continue next week in this series. Bring somebody back next week. Amen? Be praying for that miracle. Spend time praying for that miracle. Wait. Get your pen out and listen to what God's telling you. Lord, thank you so much for these people. We pray you bless them. We pray you do an amazing thing in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a right turn, everybody here this way and go this way.